find though that Western women are much more resistant to this idea or are they just as open as you see the other women? So there's a, <clears throat> there's a turn coming. Um, and I always like to refer to uh, Romans 11 when um, we're talking about the gospel going to the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. And it says that the Jews became envious. Mm. And my personal belief is <clears throat> the reason that the Jews were envious is because they were following the letter of the law. And yet the Gentiles were the ones who were experiencing a liberty and a freedom that they couldn't explain. And so they're looking at the lifestyle. They're looking at the impact the gospel is having on these Gentiles. And they're like, I don't get it. I don't get it. That, that can't be, that can't be from the Torah then. And that has to be something else. And I have this exact same experience when I went, when I, every time I hear a story of a Muslim woman who's come to Christ, because almost inevitably there's some sort of trauma conversation involved. And I'm looking at her story and I'm in, in stories like the ones you just explained, right? And worse. And here she is walking um, with joy and peace. And, and, and I'm not in certain areas of my life. How can that be? She's having dreams and visions of Jesus. And if you want to try and discount that, you're going to have to stand up against half of the known world because there's a huge portion of the world who experiences Jesus in that way. Yeah. Why am I not having dreams and visions? Does it mean I'm not a Christian? Of course not. Of course not. But I do kind of wonder how she's got what she's got. And so the trauma conversation is actually, yes, we, can, we, we tend to be more resistant to it as logic, reasoning, scientific-minded believers um, of the Western world. But, uh, but we're watching what God is doing around the world. Thank you, technology. We're watching what's happening around the world. And we're going, wait a second. Wait a second. Well, I'm even Christian. then, she's a Christian, but look at what's, what, look at what that's doing for her in the midst of a miserable context. My context is not like that. And I'm not feeling that, or maybe it is like that, but I'm not experiencing that kind of joy and peace. What is going on? Well, that's one of the things that we've tried to, to, talk about and draw people's attention to on the show, um, looking at the global statistics, nine out of 10 Christians were in the, from the Indo-European South in the year 1900, mm. which meant that their skin was white. But, and I can't remember if it's 2040, if that's the right date, 2050, but six out of 10 Christians are South of the equator. I mean, Christianity is exploding pretty much every place around the world, except in the United States right now. Right. I mean, we've seen the, the numbers go down. And the question is, why? Why, 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 why has God withdrawn his favor? Have we, has the, I mean, the devil's done his due diligence in getting into the church where wherever Christianity has really exploded, the devil's not far behind. I, I lived in New England and, and you have these great movements of God, the great awakenings, Jonathan Edwards and George Whitfield, and people are coming to just faith in Christ in these amazing ways. And now it's completely dark. You, you think of other countries that have had similar things, Europe with the UK and Spurgeon and Wesley and the land of Luther and Calvin. And they're, they're in some places, theological wastelands. And now there, there are people that are trying to go back and revive that. And that's awesome. But I don't think people are paying attention to the world. And we had a displacement of 56 million people with the world refugee crisis in the biggest shift in history. And, and I've said, there's two reasons for it. Number one, it's so that the people that have been closed to the gospel can hear it. That's number one. Number two, a lot of the people that have been displaced are already Christian and they're going into places and reviving the church. It's a win-win. If we just open our eyes to see what God is doing and why has God brought the nations? I, as I said before, in New England, the white churches were dying, but the ethnic churches were exploding. And so I, I see that and I'm like, God is doing a work. God is doing a work that we've not seen. And, and I wish the Western church would, would wake up and join God in that. Uh, as uh, Henry Blackaby said in Experiencing God, find out where God is working and join him. Or, you know, when Paul has the, the Lord <laughs> appear to him, why do you kick against the goats? Why are you fighting what God is doing? Join him in this. And, and it, you have to be smart as you do so. 
um, and be discerning. And we do have something to offer in the West. We do have great resources. We have we have more resources and funds than than anybody in history. But we've got to be able to use those and and take the best of the West, and and learn though from what God is doing in the world and joining them in that and listen. Excuse me, listen and learn. One of the things that we want to be at Apollos Watered is, is a kind of a listening ministry because Apollos gets converted in the weirdest way possible. He hears the message uh, preached about Jesus's baptism by John the Baptist. That's all he knows. And then he starts preaching right away. And of course, Aquila and Priscilla hear him and they're like, this guy's amazing, but he doesn't know anything at all. <laughs> so right. they pull him aside and it says they explain the way of God more accurately. And he listened. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to say, we want to preach from what we know, but we also want to listen to others around the world and who might know better, who have different experiences, who, who are walking with God, who believe the word of God and see God working and join him in that. And so I think that's our similar heartbeats in that regard, because yeah, we, do, we do see God at work. Um, how can people get involved with the Truth Collective? Well, one of the things I would love um, <clears throat> for folks to do is just go to the website <clears throat> excuse me, um, and start and start doing a little looking around about how the ministry works and some of these issues in particular. I know there's good, solid um, Bible basis uh, folks who are asking a lot of questions, theological questions, um, and I love that. And I, and I invite you to come and look at the site. And if you don't find what you're looking for, to send us an email, um, because that's probably number one. Uh, if you are not a believer, and um, the Bible is not yet your plumb line, um, then invite you into this conversation just, just uh, from a reasoning standpoint. Why am I stuck? Why am I stuck in the pain and the suffering that I'm, that I'm experiencing? Why am I stuck in certain patterns? Let's just start the conversation there um, and start looking at some of the areas that might be uh, holding you captive. One of the more practical things that I'd love to invite your listeners to in November, uh, the Truth Collective will bring our art exhibition to uh, Manhattan. And this is probably the first way that you'll be able to see uh, the notion of trauma, what that looks like around the world. All of our artists are either um, Christian or Muslim that come from different parts of the world. Uh, and, and, and this is a way to start exposing yourself to the notion of trauma, what that looks like globally, and even the healing process, because there's a very special component to this exhibition um, that will invite you to start looking at the healing process through God's word. You can find those things on our website. We also have um, basic level trauma healing uh, groups that, again, just enter the conversation from the ground up. Um, and start, start getting into the, the, uh, the skills and the practices of healing in your own life. Uh, you can find those on the website as well, or you can just email us with questions. If there's something you want one of us to speak, one of our fellows to come and 